take a quick rundown of these specs. We're looking at about a 10 and a half inch piece around the face, kind of gently coils around the face. Now overall, and I did take a measurement from the very top of my crown to the tip of the hair in the back, and it's about 14 inches. There's also a 10 and a half inch layer here on the sides that just gives it a little bit of fullness there. Now this uh, Avalon has a lace front and a left hand monofilament side part. I think Aesthetica does a beautiful lace front. This runs temple to temple. Does extend back very nicely. There's a lot of hair there to obscure any hairlines. And what I really love about this mono part is that they don't stop halfway. This one literally goes right back into where the uh, crown meets the open wefts in the back. So we then have the lace front left mono part, open wefted size and back. This style weighs about four and a half ounces, mid length, beautiful wavy style. So Avalon features all of this choppy, separated kind of an air dry wavy look. It's kind of tapered there at the ends as well. It almost mimics some of the bell truss styles that have a similar texture. So the only thing that sticks out in my mind that's different from the Aspen to the Avalon is just the feel and the texture of the fibers. Now sometimes you can get a little bit of a texture or feel of the denier based on the color. So I don't know if it's maybe just this uh, lilac haze color application, um, but they feel a little bit rougher, a little drier, and not quite as soft and fine as the original uh, Aspen that I had. And sometimes that is a good thing. It's not always bad that it's drier, that it's a little bit rougher, because what that gives you is a little more body. If it's too fine, then you lose some of the body, because what happens is um, on the fine texture, any attempts to hold a style just kind of fall out. But on this one, I think it holds a style very well. Now, all I did was take this out of the box, do my normal preparation. I gave it a couple of shakes. I put it on my head and then I worked it a little bit here at the front with my fingers. It's kind of stirred up here. It looks like there's quite a bit of flyaways due to the drier texture of the fibers. But that's all I've done. I haven't used any product or any heavy styling techniques or anything else. So let's talk about permatease real quick before we move on. There is some permatease all around the mono part at the crown, sides, back, and nape. So there's basically permatease all throughout this cap. I don't feel that it's overdone. I feel like it supports the style really well without being overly heavy or thick. So let's get into this color. Like I said, I have it here in Lilac Haze, one of the brand new releases in the Smokehouse Collection by Aesthetica. Now we do have a variety of reviewers working for the Wig Studio One YouTube channel. I'll post the link below. Go out, you can see a variety of reviewers reviewing all of the Smokehouse colors that just came out. So let's go ahead and focus our attention on the Lilac Haze. So getting up close on Lilac Haze. Uh, the main body of this color is a silver gray. It's a light silver gray base color. Then within that you have very fine strands, very well blended of a uh, like a light lilac color. Now the overall effect is a very powdery lilac. Um, there's not big thick chunky strands. It's just a powdery looking barely colored lilac. Now the, the farther you get away from this color, the more you can really see the lilac in it. So it's not, uh, it's not overly garish. It's not too fashionable of a color in terms of being a fad kind of a color. I do believe that these colors are very popular now and they appeal to all age groups, where before, you know, your silvery grays were only appealing to some of the more mature market. I think this would be appropriate for all ages um, and skin tones. I have a fairly, I would say, a light skin tone that's neutral. So this is not a rooted shade. So I think that's really gonna also appeal to some of the more mature markets who don't like the rooted shades. So the next thing I'm going to do is take it outside. I have two clips. Here's an 
inside, look at the cap for the Aesthetica's Avalon. There's your temple to temple lace front, beautifully extended back into a closed ear tab. Wonderful fine lace material there. And that does run back into a left monofilament part that goes well beyond the crown area, a nice wide parting space there, very well done. Lots of wefting, an open extended nape with the incremental hook type adjusters. As mentioned, there's quite a bit of stretch in this style. I believe it would be appropriate for petite average through average large. So I just want to do a couple of quick styling options for Avalon. You can learn so much by styling a wig. So um, on this one, like I said, it's just right out of the box, but let's try here with some glasses, some readers. Okay. So there is some permatease there at the temple. If you have a thicker armed glasses, it might not be as secure of a fit. Um, but I do have mine nestled between the ear and the ear tab. It feels fine. And the nice part about Avalon is it's just the perfect mid-length um, that you can do some updos and some really cute ponytails and things. And this texture is just really adorable with all of the updos. I hope you enjoyed the review. We'll see you next time on Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One.